Hi, good morning and welcome to today's Products in Focus. A lot of traders are focusing on dollar yen at the moment, which, at, which is around about 110, with many commentators talking about potential Bank of Japan intervention. Uh, we have seen some recent uh, yen buying uh, as a safe haven as equity markets have uh, kind of sold off ever, ever so slightly. And uh, that potential shadow of, uh, of Bank of Japan intervention has, uh, has kind of helped keep uh, dollar yen under control. Goldman Sachs came out today with, uh, with an update thinking that dollar yen might actually reverse course and might have a value closer to 130. And that would actually be pretty surprising for the rest of the market because that's not the way that it's going right now. But it all depends on the way that the Bank of Japan plays things. Um, will it be stimulus or not? Another interesting kind of tidbit about the Bank of Japan is that uh, they're actually one of the top 10 shareholders of about 90% of the stocks on the topics right now. And um, the, the question that many uh, analysts are asking right now is, is that likely to increase uh, going forward? And the currency war is still very much um, being played right across the board. We've seen some big moves over in the emerging markets just now. The ringgit actually under intense pressure as there uh, is a, uh, yet another scandal blowing up over there with some uh, major funds owned by the government and uh, that's having having kind of ramifications in that kind of wider area things are a little bit quieter in china right now uh, at the moment and uh, why that's uh, why that's quite interesting is because we do have um the fed meeting has been kicked off today and uh, janet yellen is due to give her statement tomorrow about the likelihood of uh, an interest rate hike at some point in the future or not and why all this information is 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 so important is uh, even though most commentators don't believe that Yellen is going to make any, um, any action this month, is what will the statement come out with? Will it be hawkish about the fact that the US 30 is near all-time highs uh, and that the macro data is actually better than expected and things have been a bit uh, quieter on, uh, on China, on the Chinese front as well? Uh, is that cause for the fact that there needs to be some sort of uh, rhetoric on a rate hike uh, or not? So that's tomorrow. Um, but let's talk about let's talk a little bit more about today from a technical perspective. But that's the fundamental side. It's all about what's happening in Japan at the moment, the Bank of Japan, what they're going to do next, and most importantly, it's all about what the Fed statement is going to come out with tomorrow. Okay, so let's move on to the technical side. So. As you can see here, this is the, the US 30. And even though it has retreated, we had a big bounce day yesterday. It was very negative to start the day. Still ended negatively, uh, but a, a strong rebound of uh, 17,847. Uh, but it's kind of flatlining a little bit today. This is on the daily charts. 71% of CMC Marcus clients are currently short. Though the technicals are relatively neutral. Moving on to the, uh, onto the UK 100. Uh, what we are seeing here is a failure to break through 64.53, a big retreat down to uh, in the middle of two ranges between 63.23 and 62.20. You can see that CMC markets clients are a little bit in, uh, indifferent as to the direct, next directional move. 54% are currently short. Uh, we are seeing that slow stochastic, slow stochastic is over, but it's almost crossing back over that 80% um, level, giving a signal to sell. And we did it already recently on the, on the ultimate oscillator, have a signal to sell there as well and negative crossover on the MACD. Not quite the rebound that we saw on the uh, US 30. The UK market sell-off looks a little bit more aggressive and a bit weaker. Um, and we are in the middle of two ranges, so that makes it a bit more difficult to choose a direction. So looking at uh, Japan 225, um, as you can see there, we had a strong sell-off there on Monday. We had a really strong rally there on, um, on, the, on the Friday. Uh, and even though we are off the session low so far today, we still are in negative territory. 74% of CMC Marks clients are currently long. The other technicals are relatively neutral, apart from the slow stochastic that's just gone overbought. The question is, when is it going to go back into the, the going to give the potential sell signal uh, when it breaks back through that 80% level? It'll be a few days. Looking at the, uh, the dollar yen, very similar um, pattern to the Japan 2 to 5 in the short term move. Very strong move there on Friday. Um, bit of a sell-off uh, yesterday and again, and again today, uh, back down to 110. It had broken, uh, had briefly broken above uh, 111 spot 61. It was unable to follow through. 84% of CMC Markets clients are currently long. They're obviously anticipating another move to the upside. Moving on to crude oil, West Texas. Uh, did briefly over four periods touch 42.95 or pretty much $43. This is obviously going to be a major uh, potential resistance level. Uh, it's dropped back off, back down towards uh, 70 spots, 79, uh, sorry, 40 spots, 79. Um, 
while it's floating about these two ranges just now, it's a bit difficult to trade depending if you're long or short. 58% of CMC Marks clients are currently short, um, but it gets a bit more interesting when it gets closer to these potential uh, rally points. Moving on to gold and a very, very volatile session. You just see there on Thursday how volatile it's been, a sell-off, then another sell-off there on the Friday, and now it's just hugging these moving averages. Um, we're still waiting for the, this, net line, this neckline break, which is never, never feeling like it's gonna come. And uh, we are looking like we're developing into this ascending triangle formation between 1307 and this trending um, support level. Uh, but it's a, it's a long time going, so volatile as well, it's a tough one to trade. And then finishing up with Euro dollar and GBP USD. So Euro dollar in the, is in the middle of two ranges right now. It's not much to say. It's an, actually trading in between both moving averages as well. Um, we're miles away from one spot 14 and one spot 11. 57% of CMC market clients are currently short. Looking at these patterns here, it does look like it's now making a pattern of lower highs. Um, if it breaks below that 55 period SMA, it might uh, potentially drift down towards one spot 11. Uh, but right now, well, it's in, in between these two moving averages and so far away from any, any meaningful support resistance, it's also a tough one to trade. And then finishing up with GBP USD, technical breakout on the sterling, um, finally breaking that level higher. One spot 46.34 could be the next potential move. I think GBP USD will be heavily influenced um, now by the Brit exit. Uh, that vote comes out on the 23rd of June. Uh, the Obama speech where he urged the UK to stay within the European Union has probably helped the, um, the, uh, the no camp, as in we want to we wanna not leave, we want to stay in the Eurozone. Uh, and that's what's caused the sterling to have that little bit of a push, push higher. And that's why it's decoupled greatly from, from Euro dollar. So there's going to be a lot of volatility in GBP USD and the UK 100 between now and the 23rd of June. Okay, so let's have a quick look at the market calendar just to very quickly finish things up. Uh, as you can see there today, <clears throat> we do have durable goods and uh, the, com the consumer uh, confidence index today. Um, we do have GDP and the FOMC and weekly petroleum stats um, tomorrow. It's all about the FOMC now. That's going to be a big one. Thursday, it's all about CPI for Japan, house prices for the UK, employment, loads of stuff coming out on Thursday, employment data from Germany, CCI from the Eurozone, CPI from Germany, uh, employment claims and then GDP from the US. Thursday's a big day as well. So Wednesday and Thursday is huge. And then Friday, you've got loads of stuff as well. You've got CPI, employment data, GDP, personal income, and the University of Michigan Sentiment Index as well to round things up. Well, guys, that's it for me. Join me again tomorrow to find out what happened next. And very good luck with your trading throughout the day. Thank you very much and goodbye.